This is going to be a two-part video series where we create this alien isolation prop. Uh, I've even talked to somebody who worked on the game and they don't actually know what this is. So let's assume this is some kind of an explosive thing. You push this down and throw it and it explodes. In this video, we're going to do the modeling and I'm going to provide the reference for you if you want to model along with me. And in the next video, we'll work on the materials. We're going to have some metal, plastic and an emission. Uh, we'll put some text on here using shrink wrap and we'll use a method to actually make this look like it's uh, indented a little bit. Now we'll work on some camera lights and render settings and then I'll give you a neat little tip for an HDR uh, environment lighting uh, thing where you can get some really nice colors and effects uh, as you can see here. All right, so if you're interested in this kind of thing, let's go and do it. So here I am in Blender and uh, I'm looking from the front orthographic view and to get there I pressed 1 and now I'm looking straight on here. I've got my screencast keys on so you can see what I'm doing and we're going to bring in the reference image and start modeling. So I'm going to press Shift A, I'm going to come down to Image, Reference, Find the reference image, click on it and load. So there it is, I'm going to press S2, that'll scale it twice, I'm going to press G to grab and I'm going to move this so that the 3D cursor is pretty much at the bottom of the reference image. I'm going to press 3 to look from the side and pull it back. Press 1 to look from the front again. The uh, reference image is called an empty. You can turn it off and turn it on as you like. We may have to move it a little bit, but we'll start from there and we're going to model from this. And I've just given you some other views to help out. All right, so here we go. I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh, cylinder and I'm going to change this to say 18 vertices we don't need too much so there it is I'm going to go into edit mode by pressing tab and Z and choose wireframe S to scale and scale it down to the smaller cylinder this one and it doesn't have to exactly uh, match the diagram I'm going to pull it up and just have it rest on the base right there okay good Alt A and deselect I'm going to press Shift and Alt and click the bottom row and that'll get all of those vertices. And go back to front view by pressing 1. Now we're ready to model. E and S to extrude and scale out to the size or the width of this bottom. E and extrude down. We can now leave that part and come up. Alt A to deselect, Shift Alt and click there. Let's pull this up to about there. Zoom in, I'm scrolling my mouse wheel to zoom in periodically. Okay, E to extrude, pull up, and S to scale, and pull it in like this. Now let's look at another image over here. You can see that it comes up, and then it goes flat out like that. So back to our diagram here, or our model here. Let's press E and S and come in to about the width of this cylinder here. All right, so this is what we have so far. Let's look at in solid view. I'm going to delete this face here by pressing X and then faces. And then I'm gonna shift alt and click to get that edge again. And I'm gonna press E to extrude. I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit. We don't have to do it all the way down. All right, so this piece here is going to be able to fit inside. And so to make that piece, I'm going to use this ring here of vertices. I'm going to shift D to duplicate and pull them up. And we're going to create this part out of this. But I want to separate it out of this object here. So I'm going to press P, separate by selection, and go back into object mode. And now I have that as a separate piece compared to this. I'm going to press 1 select this piece here go into edit mode by pressing tab a to select i'm going to wireframe and i'm going to pull this down in a ways as if it's inside now i'm going to press e to extrude and come up to here let's reposition a little bit e and s to scale out to here e to extrude pull up to this and then it's the same kind of idea. E to extrude, pull up, and then S to scale. 
and then the rest is flat let's go back into solid Z and solid all right so I'm gonna press E and S and come in a little ways and then F to make a face and that will finish that piece off right there just tap to go back into object mode so we have both of these now we're gonna make them smooth with subdivision and we'll have to put in some edge loops to make this look right so I'm gonna select and I'm gonna go control one that'll put on one subdivision like coming over here you can see it says levels one all right right click shade smooth and as you can see it's lost its shape so we're gonna put edge loops in so go back into edit mode control R for an edge loop click and drag it down right close to the bottom but not right on top of the other edges there control R and we'll pull up one here near the top and control R and near the bottom let's come underneath and because there's a subdivision sur surface we get this kind of odd uh, shading problem so I'm gonna press 3 and select the bottom face so I press 3 that goes into face selection and I've selected it I'm gonna press I to inset and just pull in a little bit that actually creates another edge loop there and sharpens that out all right we're gonna need another edge loop up here so I'm gonna press Control R click and drag and just pull it in a little bit doesn't have to be all the way in let's go into object mode and see how it looks now, if you want, you can put on two subdivisions and it'll be even smoother, but I'm just gonna leave it at one, I think. Let's work on this top part here. Go select it, go back into edit mode. Control R, drag an edge loop close to this edge here. And zoom in and drag another edge loop. Click and drag and just pull it down to about here, sort of an equal distance. That'll sharpen that edge, but there's also and you know it comes out and comes in flat and to make that more uh, visible we'll go control R drag an edge loop up here and an edge loop in here so you generally have the original edge one above and one below we'll do one more here just pull it in towards the center that should be nice and smooth and sharp now it looks great so let's come to this object now it's a separate object let's go control one for one subdivision and shade smooth right click and shade smooth and bring in edge loops control r bring them one up near the top let's do this part here control r one up one down and before we leave this let's do another one up here and one more here all right that'll give that nice and crisp look let's uh, make this nice and sharp as well by bringing an edge loop up we already have one uh, up there so that's good enough but we'll bring an edge loop up to here and that looks good enough to me right there all right let's make sure we save our work control s save our work give it a name and save it all right we're going to do the handle let's look from the front and note that the 3d cursor is right down near the bottom that's fine we're going to bring in an object there i'm going to pull it up so we're going to bring in a plane shift a mesh plane let's select it and go into edit mode i mean and let's rx 90 to do that pull it up until it reaches the top of that i can go into wireframe so you can see it's there i'm going to press 2 for edge selection and select this bottom edge I'm going to pull it up till it's just a little under because I want this to go into the the top here this handle whatever to go into the top all right I'm going to go X edges delete those edges and A to select it and now I have this sort of like a C on the side or whatever okay let's we're still in edit mode so let's go SX and pull it in and we have the basis of our handle it's just not round let's press one to go into vertex selection and all the vertices are selected i really just need this one and hold shift to get this one we're going to round these we'll round them by beveling but because they're individual vertices we'll have to press shift control b so i've done that and now i see the cross and the dotted line i'm going to pull and just pull roughly as much as you want something like that and then roll my mouse up one two three and click I'm going to select that and you'll see that I have five points in this curve and five in this one and one is right in the middle and then I have two and two okay I'm going to go back into object mode and you'll see this is what I have I'll press Z and solid okay so we're going to use this to make the handle we're going to convert it to a curve right click choose convert to curve come over to the 
curved dialog box here click on that icon scroll down to geometry open that up and come to bevel and bevel depth and hold down shift so you move a bit slower click the left, left mouse button and pull left and right to get it thicker or thinner i'm going to let go and look from the front and i'm going to go into edit mode and i'm just going to pull it down and match the diagram and then i'm going to think about my thickness right so if i want it a bit thicker i could do that i just want to make sure that it looks like the handle is in this piece of, of metal or whatever and that looks okay like that so i'm going to right click and shade smooth and to make it look a bit better i'm going to press control one i can put a subdivision now i can apply materials to a curve this is still a curve uh, but i can't uv unwrap it and do certain things with it but for this model that's going to be just fine all right so i've got my handle on there and all we have left to do is this piece here and to make that circle i'm going to use a piece of this all right so if something's selected you could use that or just press two for edge selection and shift alt and click any of these circles at all all right i'm going to shift d to duplicate it and pull it out in front i'm going to scale it down a bit and i'm going to break this out from this object so i'm going to press p separate by selection go into object mode and select it go into edit mode and then i'm going to press one to look from the front i'm going to rx 90 to rotate it 90 degrees pull it down a bit and now let's go z wireframe and we can see our model or our reference image through there i'm going to move it down a little bit and s to scale until it roughly matches the diagram and that's probably good enough pull it in a little bit um, okay so if you look at a side view you get a sense for how much it sticks out we can't match the diagram so we'll just do something okay so with that selected I'm gonna press E to extrude and I'm gonna pull back a little ways something like this it's gonna have to be a little bit long because it's gonna have to be embedded into here let's go back into solid view all right so it's gonna have to push in a little bit like that and that's probably good enough right there all right I'm gonna deselect I'm going to shift alt and click this edge. I'm in edge selection right now. It doesn't really matter though. All right, we're going to make the, the, the side part here and then it's going to indent. So to do that, we're just going to do it. Well, we can't do it from the diagram, I suppose. I'm going to press E and S and come in until it looks like it pretty much matches the diagram. And then I'll go back into object mode and E, pull in, not too far, maybe down to about there, just a little ways. I press E and S, come in just a little bit, and then F to make a face. It already has a subdivision surface on it because we created it from this, which had a subdivision surface. So we'll right click and shade smooth. Let's add some edge loops to define the shape of this. Go into edit mode and control R and pull an edge loop out to about here. Let's do another edge loop about here. So once again, I'm often getting three edge loops control R here and you can you may or may not be able to make out this funny shape here because of the subdivision so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put an edge loop here click and pull it down until it pretty much hits the surface and I have that okay I think we are done the modeling however let's turn off the empty there's something we need to do we need to make sure all of our polys are facing outwards so come up here to the overlays click there and come down to face orientation and you'll see that some of its blue and some of its red this red stuff has its polys or its normals facing inwards so it won't render properly uh, so we're going to select that piece go into edit mode a to select it all and then choose alt n and choose recalculate outside and now the entire model is blue and that's good we can come up here and turn off face orientation and you need to make sure that you do that periodically because you could have something flipped to make it look a little bit nicer right now let's come over here and turn on the cavity shader you can select a different shader i usually like that one while i'm working on it and this is what we have all right, so we are done the modeling of this. And in the next video, we're going to do the materials and some lighting and rendering. And that will be that. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you followed it. And look forward to seeing you next time.